There's not a moment to lose when you want car insurance that overtakes the competition. So choose the great value cover that only comes with super value car insurance, giving you a 10% online discount and shopping vouchers with your policy. That's a great deal for the cover you need anyway. All it takes is one big click or call. Just visit supervalue.ie slash insurance or call 0818 0101101 and our super value team will save the day from start to finish. Terms and conditions apply. Vouchers include two 10 euro or 40 euro spend. This car insurance is underwritten by AXA Insurance DAC. Super Value Financial Services DAC trading as Super Value Insurance is regulated by the Central Bank of Ireland. Doing well in your career but looking to do better? At DBS, we want you to get to where you want to go with part time postgraduate, evening degrees, and professional diploma courses taught by people as successful at what they do as they are at teaching it. Kickstart your career with real world learning. Apply today at dbs.ie. The Fibber McGee and Molly Show. NBC and Paper Mate Pen bring you Fibber McGee and Molly transcribed. The show was written by Phil Leslie and Ralph Goodman and directed by Max Hutto. We'll join Fibber and Molly in just a moment. One of the outstanding characteristics of a democracy is the right of each individual to worship according to his conscience and his beliefs. The churches of America symbolize the belief of many that through community worship, we can gain the moral strength and courage to lead a good life. They symbolize the important role which religion has played in the shaping of our nation. Each day, thousands turn to their religious leaders for personal guidance and for material help. Without religion, many of these people would have nowhere to turn in their hour of need. All of us recognize the important role played during the war by chaplains of all faiths in helping our soldiers adjust to military life. Thus, it is manifest that religion is an important part of the moral fiber of America. It was the need to worship which drove our forefathers to leave their native lands and come here. Let us not forget the importance of the church in our lives. Let us, through recognition of moral and spiritual hungers, guide ourselves and our families toward a way of life which bespeaks peace and harmony and goodwill toward all men. <laughs> Some 400 miles from the city of Wistful Vista, right in the middle of the duck hunting country, is Lake Wapahoki. And here on the shore of the lake is a cabin. Inside this cabin are three mighty hunters. Three mighty disgusted hunters. Because outside the cabin, it's raining. Boy, if this ain't the rottenest luck I ever saw. Drive all the way up here to hunt ducks, and I never saw it to fail. How many cards you want, Doc? Look at that rain. I'll take two cards, Herb. All the dirty, miserable breaks I ever got, this is the dirty, miserablest. How many cards you want, Sid? Pouring down out there. Pouring down. All day long it's been pouring. McGee, are you playing poker or counting raindrops? Take it easy, fatso. I'm playing. Well, how many cards do you want? You give me time. I'm thinking. Hmm. This ain't a game of luck, you know. It's a game of skill. See, I could keep these two here. Or I could throw them two away and keep these three here. Well... Give me four cards. Four? Well, you guys said last hand I couldn't have five, so let me have four. I'll keep one for good luck. Give Diamond Jim Brady four cards, sir. There you are, Fib. Four. I'll play these. It's up to you, Doc. Oh, if you're playing those, I pass. McGee? Mm, I'll pass without looking. Look at that rain. I've got three aces. It beats me. i got three ladies. How about you, McGee? Let's see. I saved a ten. I drew a jack, queen, king, and ace. Hey, hey, that's another one of them, what you call them, straights. What do you know about that? Well, the dumb addle brain's luck, I... Uh, skill, Dockey, my boy, skill. It ain't easy to figure what card to keep when you got five to choose from. I know. Gosh, listen to that rain. Here we drive 400 miles up here to hunt ducks, and all we've hunted so far is pots and pans to put under the leaks in the dad ratted roof. Listen, there's another leak. Uh, that makes nine so far. Here's a pan. How's this? Well, I don't know, Doc. Sounds a little off-key to me. Doesn't it, Pib? Let's see. Me, me, me. Yeah, that's a little sharp, Doc. Try the big pot. 
No, no, not the one under your belt. The one on the table there. This one? Okay, how's that? Well, that's better. Perfect B flat. Hey, that's an idea. Music. What? I'm tired of this card game. How about a little close harmony? Close harmony? Yeah, why not? You're a tenor, you claim. Herb sings baritone, I can sing in the middle. With you in the middle, broad beam, the closest Herb and I can come to each other is about ten feet. <laughs> hey, the soft pans. I know what we could sing. What? Uh, come on over here to where all the leaks are. I'll right. show you. Uh, hand me that bucket, Tim. That's it. Listen, you hear that? Yeah, but I don't see what you... It's a perfect accompaniment for the anvil chorus. Huh? Listen. Dee, 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 dee. How's that? That's pretty clever. Yeah. Not a new idea, of course. Uh, when I was in vaudeville with Fred Nittany, the guy that him and me had us a vaudeville act together from Starved Rock, Illinois together, we were on the bill one time with a couple of Swiss bell ringers that they used to take glasses of water and play all kinds hey, of... Hey, hey, come on over here, you guys. I got some pans over here. Come on, listen to this. The Toreador song. What? Da 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 Stuck a feather and called it. <laughs> oh, good. Ah, oh, for the dead rat, the dead rat. Why so bitter, Butterball? Oh, look at this. I was going to write Molly a letter, but this corny old pen I found up here is leaking all over me. Oh. Doggone it, if I'd have brought along my good paper-made pen, I wouldn't have ink all over my hands and all over my clothes. The paper-made pen won't leak, huh? No. If you'd write your prescriptions with a paper-made, maybe the druggist could read them. Oh. Paper-made ink dries quick as a wink, and it won't smudge or smear. Or transfer. Right. Hmm. The reason you don't get all messy with it is because the point is always clean on a paper-made. Never needs wiping, Doc. Ah, that's paper-made. The only pen that's approved by bankers and school principals, right? Right. They only cost a dollar sixty nine too, and they come in seven different color stylings, right? Right. And wait, wait a minute. Who's telling this anyhow? We both are, Sonny. Oh. Like anyone who does a lot of writing, I know all about the paper made pen. I've got one in each color. Here, use this one. Well, why didn't you say you had a paper made with your large bucket? All right, a quick note to Molly, and we can mail it when we get home. <laughs> Want to play another game of darts? No, not me. What time is it? 1.30. Okay. Too early to start dinner. Want to play some anagrams? 20 questions? Kanatsa? Tennis, anyone? Is the rain letting up a little, or am I just getting used to it? It doesn't sound as bad as it did. I'll take a look. It's easing up a little. I can see the front porch. Gee, this is mighty discouraging. Darn it, I think I'll clean my gun again. I already cleaned mine four times. New gun, too. I'd like to shoot it a little at this point. Yeah, me too. But I'll tell you one thing. If this rain ever does let up and we get out in that duck blind, you'll really get some shooting, Herb. Boy, when I start working that duck call of mine on them ducks... Hey, how about that duck call, Fib? This stuff's all new to me, you know. How's that thing work, anyhow? Oh, don't ever ask him a thing like that, Herb. Hmm? Now you've done it. I think I'll go sit in the car. If he's going to start that thing. Oh, I drowned before I went three steps. Oh, brother, we're stuck. Oh, well, I'm sorry, Doc. I didn't mean to start anything. Now, here's the picture, Herb. I and you and Doc here are sitting there in the blind seat waiting, you see, and the ducks come over high, out of range. So you call them and we shoot them, huh? Well, good. Thanks a lot. I'll let... Uh... Oh, it ain't that easy, Herb. As the ducks come over, I take my duck call, hold it gently to my mouth, Lip it like a saxophone player doing a solo run on Hindustan and send forth the plaintive mating call of a lady mallard. Like this. E, does a duck sound like that? No. Just exactly. I call to the ducks. Way up high in the 
the sky there. They answer me. I answer them. And the whole flock wheels down towards the lake and answers me. Oh, for the love of I answer them again. And they come a little closer and answer me. Uh, When do we start shooting? Any minute now. I answer them back again. Hand me my shotgun, Herb. And they answer me back again. The next duck that answers, I'm going to start shooting. Stand aside, Herb. Oh, okay, Sarpus, okay. My gosh, a guy can't have any fun around you at all. It's raining Persians and pointers out there. We can't go hunting without drowning. Nobody wants to play Kanatsa. I'm tired of throwing darts and it's too early to start dinner. My gosh, what are we going to do, you big grouch? Do we have to be doing something? Can't we just sit here? Yeah, let's just, well, just talk, huh? Talk? Yeah, this is my first hunting trip, you know. I I don't know much about it. You guys could tell me about this. Well, my gosh, I'll never forget my first hunting trip, Herb. Uh Uh-oh. It was up in the North Woods. I was tracking a moose through the snow, and I'm telling you, boy, it was cold. It was so cold, my footprints kept running ahead of me to keep warm. I realized it was pretty chilly when I seen a 60-foot pine tree slapping its limbs together to work up circulation. But I didn't really know how cold it was till I seen that wind. You know how the wind always whistles through the trees? Yeah. Well, this wind didn't whistle. It just puckered up and froze that way. It was cold, Herb. Yeah, cold. Yes, sir. Well, I kept following them moose tracks till suddenly they changed to bear tracks. The biggest grizzly bear tracks I ever saw. I kept on. Two days and two nights I trailed that bear and suddenly I seen him. He was standing on a ridge, silhouetted against the sky. He had a pack mule in his mouth and he was holding that moose under one arm. He he was big. Well, you're the biggest. It was a perfect shot. I raised my rifle chipped the ice off the trigger, took careful aim, and fired. And would you believe it? I wouldn't. That bullet came out of that hot rifle barrel, hit that change in temperature, and froze in midair, 20 feet from that grizzly. Oh. I laid my rifle down, crept up till I was under that frozen slug, whipped out my cigar lighter, and held it under the bullet. Suddenly it thawed, and there was a sharp bang and zingle. The bullet got that grizzly right through the heart. Oh, this is too much. I turned the moose loose, and the pack mule. Where'd Doc go? Out to drown himself, I think. Well, sir, that bear must have weighed a ton. Because when I put him on my back... Hey, wait, wait for me, Doc. Hmm. Yeah, probably just swell in and out, I guess. I don't know how I'd ever got that bear home, anyhow. Yeah, I guess I'll open some more peanut butter. Need a little chocolate bar. Fibber and Molly will be right back. Entertainment, a one-word description of why most of us turn on our radios. And for the finest of all radio entertainment, we'd like to invite you to keep tuned to your NBC station throughout the day and evening. During the daytime hours, you'll find plenty of fun-filled shows to keep you amused and interested. NBC Radio will brighten your day and chase your blues away when you listen to such entertaining programs as the Bob Hope Show, Break the Bank, Strike It Rich, It Pays to Be Married, The Phrase That Pays, and many, many more. There's music and laughs, drama and pathos on the NBC Radio Network every weekday. So make it a steady habit to set your dial to this station for top radio listening. And remember, tomorrow evening you'll hear songs by Miss Dinah Shore on her fine program and by Frank Sinatra on his new show. Also, Tuesday nights on most NBC stations, listen to Frank Sinatra in the dramatic role of Rocky Fortune. Day or night, every day of the year, the familiar three NBC chimes are your invitation to wonderful radio enjoyment. Well, gentlemen... I think we're going to get some hunting tomorrow. It's clearing up out there. Well, it's about time. My goodness. This is about what I usually expect at that. I never went duck hunting in my life that it didn't rain. I did. Camped out in the tent for three days one time and never rained a drop. Didn't, huh? Nope. Snowed all the time. Oh. Good night. Good night. Good night, fellas. <laughs> NBC and 
Paper Mate Fins have brought you the Fibber, McGee, and Molly program transcribed. With Arthur Q. Bryan as Dr. Gamble and Parley Bear as Herb Travis. This is John Wall inviting you to be with us again tomorrow night for another visit with Fibber, McGee, and Molly. Enjoy the Meredith Wilson Show weekday mornings on the NBC radio network.